What is the strongest support setup in Star Rail? Well, in my opinion, it's most likely Sparkle, Ron May, Ting Yun. Now, clearly, this doesn't have a sustain. However, the damage output that these supports can give to your DPS is so crazy that you're actually going to be able to beat enemies before they beat you. Now, given that's going to need a good amount of investment on pretty much everybody, all four characters are going to have to be leveled at 80 with some HP defense subs to make sure that they don't die prematurely in any fights. Now, some of the crazy synergies between these three supports is that Ron Mei is going to give her 10% speed buff to both Ting Yun and Sparkle. Now, why is that good, right? Ting Yun is a character with 115 base speed that if you have her about 173, 174, she's actually going to be able to go three times in one turn if you also have Dance 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 and then also take advantage of the speed boost that her skill gives you. Sparkle, on the other hand, is also going to be able to go three times or maybe even just twice, although that's a little bit easier to do, right? Just 134, 124 with the Ron May speed buff. But if you're able to get it up to about 174, then you are going to be able to get three actions per cycle with a Dance 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 and a Ron May. Now, if you have two sets of Dance Dance Dances, that might even drop it even further, and then you'll be around like a 162 or something like that range, right? Now, some other synergies is that when you do want to advance your characters multiple times, notably three times, with Sparkle, the problem that some of your DPSs run into, because you're going to be running wanting to run them on attack boots is that they're actually not going to be able to push be pushed into the cycle with sparkle if they're slow that's why ting yun is so great because her one of her eidolons is actually going to give your dps a 20 percent speed boost after they use their ultimate that speed boost is going to allow for their action value to be just low enough right to be able to be pushed into the cycle with sparkle so there's going to be three demonstrations of these support setups in action. We're first going to do a Zhui build, then we're also going to do a Doctor Ratio, and then third is going to be a Jing Liu, right? So let's speed through this build essentially because Zhui is pretty straightforward, right? Uh, we do have just a quantum set, attack rope, a good amount of crit rate, done with it. Okay, now Sparkle. 178 doesn't need to be that fast. 174 is good enough. Now, when it comes to building up speed, if you don't have the speed, you know, just toss on whatever you have. I have imaginary and damage and HP because I just want speed subs. So even though I'm suffering from not having an energy rope, it's fine. It doesn't really matter too much. As for Ting Yun, the Von Wack is also going to be super helpful. Let's say you don't actually have enough speed subs to make Ting Yun super fast, although it's easier because her base speed is so high. Um, that is going to make it so she's just going to be pushed into the action cycle very soon on the first wave. Right, so let's get into the first demonstration. This is all going to be against MOC 12 Yanching. Now, unfortunately, for this side, we're actually not going to have pretty much any quantum enemies. The Trotter is going to be the only thing that actually has a quantum weakness, which is going to increase the stacks for Zhui just a little bit. But pretty much, when you use Ronmei with Zhui, your ults are going to consistently get six stacks for her follow up, right? And if your Zhui is not E6, then the little chips that you get when you attack an ice enemy for example right there she is going to gain one stack so then just your four stacks from the ult will be enough to then trigger the follow-up for Zhui. Now, we are going to be targeting this healing enemy. Reason being is that if he survives and if he heals, then it makes it a little bit tougher for us to kill him, right? Now, since he is in the range of dying essentially because he saps his health when he summons his things. Ting Yun plus the dot damage from the Trotter is going to be able to take him out before he has another action. Now we are also going to apply Sparkle's Cypher on her Zhui's turn so it lasts for one extra turn. Pretty important. Okay, now in this circumstance, since our adjacent damage was able to actually take out the healing enemy, we didn't need to rely on the dots from the Trotter, so we're just pretty much going to forego the damage bonuses that we can get from the Trotter. And as you can see, since the Dance 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 did push up Sparkle, Sparkle is able to go three times now, and now with a skill plus an ult, we are going to take out this enemy. One of the cool things about Zhui is that if you have enough stacks, similar to Dr. Ratio, or maybe even any follow-up character, then the stacks are immediately going to trigger at the beginning of the wave, which is great. Now, it is unfortunate that two of the stacks did actually fall on the Trotter. We did want the majority of the stacks to fall on Yang Qing because she is just going to be able to kill the Trotter with her skill. But since there's no Trotter, we'll just do single target. And then the ult is now going to trigger another set of follow-ups. 
Wonderful. Now next we're going to reapply Benediction because we did run out. And then since we actually have Tingyun next, we could basic, right? But when it comes to skill points, the reason why I did that is because my Sparkle actually doesn't have an energy regen rope. So if she didn't get hit there, she wouldn't be able to actually trigger her ult on her next action, which would then translate to damage boost, obviously, for Zhui. Now we're going to skill again to make sure Tingyun is faster than those two swords, because those two swords can actually kill us. But since we can trigger Dance 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 before the swords go, we're actually going to be getting Sparkle's third action before the swords, and therefore not taking any extra damage. Okay. Tingyun and Sparkle are pretty close to dying here, so it is important that we try to kill this as fast as possible before those swords hit. Next, since we already have or still have one stack of Ron Mei, one basic will be enough to get our ult up, which is wonderful. And then, unfortunately, since Yan Ching's elements are actually locked out, we're not going to be able to be relying on a follow for Zhui. So hopefully the raw damage from the skill and the ult is able to take it out. Zhui, do me a favor and crit twice. Crit twice, please. Beautiful animation. Wonderful. So, Yang Cheng is now dead, so let's get over to Dr. Ratio. The rotations for this fight is going to be relatively similar for whatever DPS you use. And since Sparkle is going to keep the crit damage on Ratio for his follow-ups, it is going to be a pretty nice synergy. Now, unfortunately, obviously, we're not going to have debuffs on this team, so we are going to have to rely on a couple of follow-up procs. But even if we miss one, it should be fine regardless. Now, once again, since we do have Ronmei's Light Cone, we do apply the Light Cone damage boost on Ratio's turn, so it lasts an extra turn, meaning that even after his turn is over, he's still going to have three turns of the 24% damage buff. Now, can we hit the 60%? Okay, we got lucky and we hit the 60%, but we didn't crit because he hasn't built up his stacks yet because the enemy didn't have too many debuffs, so he didn't get too many of the stacks of uh, summation. Beautiful. Okay, so now once again, Sparkle's ult is now going to be activated on Ratio turn, so we get one extra turn of the Cypher damage bonus. And since his effect hit rate, or effect res debuff did land, we do get that 100% chance for that one. And as for now, we're going to trigger one chalk. And we actually don't even need the second chalk of his to land, because we could have basically drawn May and triggered the chalk, but this is going to be fine. And same as Zhui, it actually works out just the same. Now the follow-up is going to then land at the beginning of the cycle on Yang Jing, which is wonderful. And at the beginning of the action cycle, right, so at zero action value, we're going to trigger both Ratio's ult and Tingyun's ult to make sure that our Dance 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 does incre or decrease Sparkle's value just enough so she is going to be able to go three times in one cycle. Now, we didn't trigger that follow-up. That's unfortunate, but it doesn't really matter because the single target damage of this team is just so high, and since Yang Ching is only one enemy, it's pretty fine. Now, there goes our second chalk versus Yang Ching. Wonderful. We'll boost up Ratio once more, get that Cypher damage bonus, and he is going to be getting the ult right now after this skill. So if we hit the 80%, okay, we got lucky we hit the 80%, and this ult is actually going to kill him. But even if not, we still had one entire turn with Ratio, so one skill, one ult with uh, Ting Yun possibly, and then even the two chalks from his ult that we just landed. So he still had three chalks left to go and it pretty much demolished it. So for the last one, we are going to do a Jingliu run. This run I actually did on stream, so I do apologize if the audio was kind of bad. The quality might also be a little bit lower, might be 30 frames. And on top of that, I'm just gonna be staring down because I play Star Rail on my phone, right? So until I get a PC, I'm kind of gonna be looking down like this while I play. So let's get into the Jingliu run. Yep. The Akron one. It, there's really a version of Akron in every game. There's an Akron in, uh, in Star Rail. There's Akron in Genshin. 
kind of, like the Arlecchino thing. There's uh, Acheron and Nikkei, the Scarlet, something, something. Well, Scarlet is my favorite, probably, just because... I mean, I play the other ones, but I'm not, like, good at them. I think Star Wars is kind of the only game that I actually understand, like, the mechanics behind. So, I won't play it, like, any other game. Or at least on YouTube. Or, like, to make videos about, because I do want to stay relatively niche for I could do my dailies, though, if you guys want. I don't know if that's interesting, or you guys would just dip. Oh, fuck. I do have to do the, the Genshin dailies, the PGR dailies, and the Nikkei stuff. I'll be honest, I have no idea if Nikkei is even allowed to play on this. <laughs> like, it might be allowed, but I might just get some kind of, like, sexual strike. If I go to the wrong character. Is it just me or I didn't do this right? I don't even know what happened. <laughs> Uh, that's probably gonna die. Hmm. Okay, come on. This time it'll work. No credit game. Why can't we never credit? Damn it, nothing hits sparkle, so we can't get our energy from the old. Wait, that's so necessary, actually. We can't do it without that. Yeah, we can't do it without that. Hello. Magdeal. What's up? <laughs> what? Three times on Jing Liu? That's kind of crazy. Um... Shoot, if it just hits Jing Liu again, we're dead, but... Oh, no, it doesn't. We can just action advance everybody, it's fine. Yeah, we'll go like this. Go like this. Go like this. Go like this. We really need to crit, though. If we don't crit, it's kind of done. Okay. Still an ult. Might be close. Depends on the dot damage. It's at 8% it might die. There we go. Hey, it worked. <laughs>